Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Thought I would just do a quick uh, video on some progress and updates and a couple bugs that I found in the game. Um, well, to start with, obviously this uh, Merc MX-12H got released out to the uh, workshop over the weekend. Um, pretty happy with that. I think I, I like the uh, final ship. I was struggling with it for a while, though. I mean, I was like not liking it and this and that, but uh, I think it eventually kind of came together. And I had a few bugs when I released it, so I had to do a bunch of little patches to it. Um, one had to do with circuitry, and I was helped out with that by uh, a very kind uh, person out there. So um, that took place, and that got fixed up, and had to do with the circuit between the uh, the switches over here. I had I had the thruster RCS locking the performance mode switch, and that would cause a problem where when you would turn off this. It would keep this on and it would stay locked um, so that didn't work out so well and then I ended up removing that lock in one of the one of the uh, quick patches but it turns out what really needed to take place was a new circuit needed to be created and basically it's a and it's a 2x and circuit and it's taking both of these the thruster RCS and performance mode and then it's creating a, uh, a new a new thing here, uh, performance thruster. And then all the performance thrusters were set to that. So basically it's saying that the performance thrusters will not be on unless both the thruster RCS and the performance thruster switches are on. So that fixed up the problem. So now, even though like currently all the thrusters are on on this ship, when I hit the uh, main thruster RCS, it's now turning off all the thrusters on the ship, even if the other one's still on. So, and then once you crank that back on, then this, this will be on, but if you just turn off that and then thruster RCS is on, then you only get your half thrusters, pretty much, that are on. Um, so that that's one update. Now a bug. Okay, let me let me show you what happens here. Um, when I released this ship, I I didn't catch it. Um, I had a bunch of this texture usage, kind of like around the thrusters as you see now, and kind of on the insides of the thrusters and things like that. Basically, I don't use it a lot with the uh, human factions, but I did have it in places like over here too. Um, but when I was building it before releasing it, I was kind of like texturing some things and I did a mass fill and I'll show you what happens here. So I had my standard uh, armored steel or uh, hardened steel blocks for SVs and I went through and I did a replace all texture with this. Okay, but on this texture because I'm not using this texture anywhere in the ship. Um, so it should just replace that texture with this texture if, I mean, the settings are right. But when I do this, it wipes that texture out from the ship. And that's what happened to me when I released it. I didn't catch it when I first put it out. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I spawned it in again to look at stuff. And I'm like, man, I could have swore I textured all this stuff. Where did it go? Well, that's, that's essentially what happened. It just wipes out that particular texture, which is this texture over here and it seems to just do this wipe out this texture only and I can't really tell you why but it's just a, a weird bug I discovered um, now another update is I skinned this new Creel SV and that's uh, kinda like in it still um, at night it looks pretty cool I'll show you a night nighttime effect here in a minute but um, so this one is uh, lacking the interior yet, and I think that actually is going to be a tutorial I'm going to do probably tomorrow. Now, today is actually my birthday, so I got some people coming over, and we're going to do lunch and stuff. And I don't have much time to do a video today, but I did want to get something out. So this one's coming along. Now, bug number two that I've discovered, and uh, well, here, I'll show you over here first, is there's a particular piece of glass... 
um, and it has to do with the uh, the left side version of this glass that they are like sticking out a glass width um, just on that side now I've got these rotated correctly and I know there's two different parts there's like a right and left of this particular uh, glass window uh, but it's the uh, like the left side only that's doing it and I've got no fix for this um, but it's happening on this ship now and also on this ship um, now this ship is the next part of this is I kind of finished this up um, I made a lot of changes to the body and things oh, yeah, okay I do have that off uh, it's hard to notice because I didn't show this ship a whole lot before but uh, a lot of little body tweaks were done and I added a drone hatch to it things like that um, got the interior all set up and and done and uh, this is a, a, a player level 10 ship and I'm giving it the option to have a shield and uh, pentaxa tank now this ship does not however do warp so it's uh, it's basically it's the worker bee of Creel SVs more or less it's got some guns on it and it can engage you know lighter POIs and things like that but it's uh, it's a worker bee and it got equipped with pretty good amount of storage so 13k storage and only 1.5k ammo storage and then of course a drone hatch now what I did is this ship is mostly steel except for the blocks around the cockpit over here and around the core position were uh, moved to hardened steel so other than that it's pretty much a steel ship it's pretty light it has a lot of lift thrust um, so if you see the 80 on lift here uh, and then everything else is balanced pretty well to 40 except for your, your down thrust which I usually go light on that because gravity um, so yeah 80 here 13k storage I think it would have no problem moving that storage might even be very useful on high gravity planets and uh, I've been getting a lot of comments on, you know, uh, do these ships work on high gravity planets? Now, I haven't done much testing on that, and I do plan on getting into that sometime. But what I have been doing, due to weights and volumes and high gravity planets, is I've been putting in an excessive amount of lift thrust, especially on ships. Um, like even this guy here, say I take you off a minute. I mean, obviously, you should see me shoot up in the air super quick, but this thing has, you know, is it, six of, or I'm sorry, 12 of these uh, one by one by three thrusters on it for a fairly light ship. That's that's pretty excessive, but you know, it's got 13k storage on it now too, so I I don't mind at all. And as you can see over here, the uh, same problem with the uh, glass window over on this side here too. So those are the two bugs I discovered, and this glass window bug is kind of bugging me, <laughs> more or less, uh, because this was my next planned release ship, and I don't really want to release it with that problem, but I can't fix that problem unless I redesign the uh, the cockpit. Now, this originally had a uh, prefab cockpit on it, and I did get rid of that. One of the design characteristics I've been trying to do with the Creel is to, to have... Well, so far, mostly all enclosed glass cockpits. Maybe just one of their uh, style features, I guess. So, other than that, um, this ship is doing pretty well. Um, and I think it's just about done. I've got everything kind of working on it and whatnot. Um, so, next on the, uh, on the list. Um, over here, you see some an alternative colored version of the MX-12H. There's no other difference on this ship, and it's not like I'm going to release a different model that's a different color. But also you see an MX-10 with the same color scheme. So I've been kind of going with the idea, and I want to get some information out on this. But if you like like an alternative color scheme, and I could do this with the Creel as well pretty easily, is what I did is make a uh, different palette. So when I get in here, right now I've got uh, my, my palette 2 set to this alt color scheme so basically with the colors used for these ships it's pr pretty much this alternative red these colors here and then I got an alternative green um, 
So on any of the ships that I've got right now, here I'll just click on what changed, and it's basically this row of colors here. So to start with, on this position here, if you were to build this this alternative color scheme yourself, the uh, you'd want to look at the RGB settings and just set these dials to that, and I think you'll have this, the same exact color. So on this one, we got a 45 on red, 50 on green, and 46 on blue. And then going down a block, we have a 50 on red, 50 on green, and 49 on blue. Um, next one over, over here, 50 on red, 51 green, 49 blue. I mean, almost identical. Uh, next one is 35 red, 36 green, and 35 blue. And next, uh, 47 on red, 50 green, 50 blue. And finally, 39 red, 49 green, 49 blue. So, point in case, say, say you do make a, uh, like an alternative uh, color palette and use this. Let me go over to another Merc ship. Like, how about an MX-14 here? And then I will go... I hit the right button um, to the color scheme. Now this one, uh, uh, maybe this one's got a little bit more. I think I used one additional color on this one for whatever reason. Um, so I'll go to my uh, this other set and I will apply to current. And then bam, the ship has a different color scheme on it. Now I missed something on this one. So it looks like I got some kind of green in here that's not right because it's using some of that, I guess. Huh, that's weird. But it should work with most ships, and if there's a discrepancy like i just seen here, I'll try to figure that out and why that happened on this particular ship. Um, I think i got another one here I can try it with, too. MX-9. Ah, wrong key again. So, color scheme to apply to currents. So, it's just a, an option and I might try to get like these color charts out in case you wanted to recolorize things. And the same thing could be easily done with the Creel. So you didn't want the, uh, the purples and the, uh, the dark blues and things like that. You could uh, switch it out. It could have an orange, could have a red, could have all different color schemes without you know, putting out different color scheme ships, which I don't really want to do. All right, so on, on one other thing, and why I've got this, this very old MX-3R sitting behind this one, is I found that these are virtually equivalent in cost between the two ships. Um, like this one uh, has an hour and 27 minute build time, uses those particular resources. This particular ship has hour and 26 minute build time, uses very similar resources. Um, so that kind of leads me to uh, think that this would be like the human version of the MX-3. Uh, however, this thing is really set up for storage better and, and it's got a, a bigger interior. And, and then I was looking to uh, refurbish the MX-3, really old ship. Um, but then I got into looking at it. <clears throat> and this is, uh, keep in mind here, I'll give it some power just to be cool here, but... Uh, this is one of my, uh, this is the second SV I released to the workshop, and I'm just looking at it now, and I'm like, wow, you know, I, uh, I wouldn't have done things this way anymore, and then I was like, well, why don't I have internal, uh, cockpit access? Why, why is there no way to access this? And this is like, for whatever reason, I cram this whole ship full of all kinds of parts and things all clustered together in the middle here, and I blocked access, and and things like that so it's kind of a powder keg I mean um, this front gets penetrated and then there's this big explosion zone that would happen over in here um, so by looking at the current design of it I almost don't want to rebuild it because it's uh, I would have to make too many changes so what I was thinking about doing is just sitting side by side making a new ship that looks similar but hopefully a little bit more aerodynamic looking I guess um, and uh, 
and then just kind of replace it. But I'll probably have to start with this design because I don't want to release a new ship for it to the workshop. So I'll probably just rip this thing apart, gut it, and do some body tweaks and just rebuild it for today's kinds of purposes. So that's something I got on my agenda right now too. Um, can't think of anything else. I think that's pretty much all the uh, progress that was made. I, uh, again, I was spending quite a lot of time over the weekend getting a post ready for this and doing final details and then a whole bunch of little patches to it after the fact. Um, trying to fix up the, the one area that was kind of caused by that bug and that I missed when I released it and then of course the uh, the switch issue. But other than that I think it's doing uh, it's doing pretty good so I'm, I'm happy with that I'm glad it came out decent. I was worried about the build early on I didn't really like it and and if you were following all these uh, ships I was building I think this was my second or third attempt at making a uh, PvP ship but that's where the this ship and this ship both came from because they were also intended to be a PvP ship at one point in time and they're uh, getting built but now they've uh, been migrated to other kinds of ships and it is something I'm thinking about right now I do believe the humans especially with SVs outmatch the, the Creel I mean uh, the Creel ships are more exotic and because of that they're probably not quite as tough um, because so many of these flares and extensions but they cost but they cost a decent amount and that's and that's just the way it's going to be mostly for the creel because of the exoticness that i'm trying to do with them they're going to be a little pricier versus their performance i, I believe generally and i don't think there's a whole lot i can do about that because uh they're they're really about exotic designs and I'm trying to make them all fit, even though this one's a little bit of a stretch from the other Creel ships. I think it fits pretty good, and it's got some of the same lighting characteristics. Another thing, too, especially with the Creel, what I'd like to do is, I'm sure you all see this glare that you get often. Um, certain times of day, it's worse than others, or certain parts of a planet. Um, what I like to do a lot is hop into the console and put in this pole fog and now it's a, almost an instant effect well it takes a few seconds so you get this fog on there what i've noticed even when it's not dark out it kind of gets rid of a lot of the glare um, and you can kind of look at uh, ships in a different light I, I i would guess if it's a little bit darker in conjunction with that then i think it makes these uh, creel ships especially kind of stand out where you could see them, but it's not over overwhelmingly dark, I guess. Um, but yeah, I am looking forward to this one, and I think the next tutorial is I want to uh, build out the interior on this one. Uh, little things I'm thinking about right now is obviously I, when I'm when I build out interiors now, and I didn't used to do this. The first thing I'm, I, I deal with is storage, um, and the reason for that is what I'm trying to do is properly have storage like run across the ship now and even as possible on like both sides because some of my other designs would have all the storage on one side or the other of the ship and that can cause weight problems and another biggie is the pentaxid tank that I, that I recently learned that being centered and that's and I caught that before uh, finishing up this ship so I managed to uh, slap it right in the middle of the ship here around the center of gravity um, that helps because the uh, the fuel you put in a pentaxa tank is very heavy so if you have it out to one side or the other um, it'll tend to lean out that way if it's full and obviously the same thing goes for your storage so like on this ship with storage I know it's really hard to see now but when I first got into doing the interior what I started to do is just throw storage boxes right across the floor and then I would keep them even pretty much on both sides. Um, now, I because ammo is also on this side, which is also kind of stretched across the floor a little bit, I added a couple more on this side to kind of balance that off. So the whole point was to try to keep this weight uh, distribution 
pretty even going across the ship. Now, I don't think a small fluctuation is going to cause you much grief, but if everything's on one side, it, it will now. Didn't used to be the case. N new features to the game. Just something to think about, you know, when, when you're building, building these uh, designs. Um, and I think that's about it today. Uh, tomorrow I do plan on doing a video, so I will uh, uh, um, probably want to get this one going here. And uh, my goal right now is to finish up a lot of my existing projects. Um, after I get this one set up, I think I'm going to move back over to this one here and get this one going. And this one's going to have uh, a lot of storage on it. My plan is to have... Uh, the equivalent in some interval if not of, of five 13k storage uh, items on it due to its uh, huge amount of lift thrust and I was thinking about just putting a conventional drone hatch in here um, I don't think my design is very good for trying to uh, use it as an auto miner extractor and that is uh, one thing that still bugs me about the uh, the Merc um, AME is I built this kind of for fun but this was when uh, the CPU kicked in and my goal on this ship was to make a 7500 CPU ship and that was um, that functions you know and, and can do everything kind of a general all-around ship and this this was just kind of a, a thing. I started, it started out just for cosmetics, but then I'm like, well, you know, I could actually make this work. So you could pull up to an auto miner and the way you, you walk out here, you could walk up, you could scoop it and you can jump back in your ship and fly away. Big side effect with this is because I was so adamant on following 7,500 CPU and using the, the fewest amount of thrusters typically I could, except for these guys over here. Um, it doesn't have a lot of lift thrust and it doesn't have a lot of storage but it's maxed out on the 7500 CPU um, so I am kind of contemplating on a, a newer version of a ship like this to have similar functionality of being able to easily get and line up to a auto miner but have far far more lift thrust and storage um, so that's just one idea down the road now the Creel need a lot of this kind of thing too. They don't have much of that, but the Creel creations so far have, uh, besides the Gast, are just gonna have more storage in general um, and bigger left lift thrust. So uh, as I move forward, I keep on changing things up. As in CPU too, uh, uh, current state of CPU, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Um, I took a look at this ship just yesterday and I just wanted to see for the heck of it how much CPU does this ship have now it has 13k storage 1.5k ammo storage that's quite a few th few thrusters eight guns on it I I figured it would be over by about 10 to 12,000 CPU maybe 14,000 something like that and then I looked at the number on it and I'm like oh my god 391,000 CPU so something's either wrong or I don't know what happened or maybe it's they, they're changing the way this is working again. Um, but yeah, um, and I determined that was actually due to cargo extensions. Let's see if I have any of those on me. Let's grab some a minute. Oh, I did have some on me. All right, so cargo extensions. So right now, if we look at our CPU, we're at 391,000. Let me place one of these. Now we're at 394,000. So we, we're getting like 3,000 CPU usage from one cargo extension currently. Um, again, I don't think it's important at all because it just doesn't seem to be using the stat anymore. But... Well, that makes it literally impossible to build anything with, with 7,500 CPU, unless it had no storage. I mean, literally, two, two storage boxes, and you've, you're already at 6,000 CPU, or two, two storage extensions, I should say. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Just something else to note that I came across. Well, anyway, uh, you all have a good day, and I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to try to uh, get some kind of... 
uh, color charts made, uh, like a, a Photoshop image or something, to have the, uh, the red, green, and blue colors in for alternative color palettes, and kind of dabble with that for the Creel too. They could have a couple different colors, maybe orange or green or red or something like that. But uh, I think that'd be kind of a neat thing moving forward to have that as an option. But I. I, my big thing is I don't want to put out alt versions of stuff. I've done it a couple times before and I typically regret it. So I'd rather have it just like, hey, if you like this other color scheme, then, then pop in these, uh, these numbers and you'll have this look instead of this look. So, all right. Y'all have a good day. See you later.